Hey, I am Jalen and I have a lot of twisty cubes. Back in the day, I loved trying to solve them as quickly as possible. I did the 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5 and even the 6x6. And not only cubes, I also had a 2x4 and a 3x5 and even this weird pentagon megaminx. But nowadays, all I do is gather dust. After you solve them a thousand times, the fun kind of wears off. However, it's not all sad news. These new cubes have tiny magnets in them that makes turning them super satisfying. So what I want to do is figure out a way how to use the turning of the cube to control something. Something like a video game. Or even better, I'll just make my own game that can only be controlled by this Rubik's cube. Now, how can I turn the physical movement of the cube into a digital input on my computer? I could use a webcam to track the faces of the cube. But the problem is that my fingers keep getting in the way and having to show all the sides of the cube after each move will become tiring very quickly. No, this isn't. The answer can be found right here. This is a smart cube. It can connect to your phone through an app and it tracks how fast you can solve a cube. But that's not all. It also tracks every move you make and even how it's rotated. If I can connect this cube to my PC instead of my phone, I can read all the moves and create my own digital cube controller. The cube uses Bluetooth to connect to a phone, the same way you connect your wireless earbuds. When I tried to connect the cube to my PC and read all the data, it was all gibberish. A seemingly random string of bytes, because apparently all the data is encrypted. Who encrypts a cube? What are they gonna do? Hack my cube and see how slow I am at solving it? <laughs> I don't know. There is no way I'm gonna try to figure all this out. I mean, I can't be the first person to think of this, right? Cubers are giant nerds. Myself included, some of them spent the time to build their own timers, but on PC. And lucky for me, some of them even work with smart cubes. You can connect your cube to Chrome and ta-da, a working connection. And even better, that code is right here on GitHub. The only problem is, all the code is in JavaScript. And I don't want to use a web browser to make my game. I want to use what I've always used, Unity. Before I can connect my cube to Unity, I'm going to need a digital cube. When we take apart a real cube, we see that it consists of 6 centers, 12 edge pieces and 8 corner pieces. So I'm going to need a center piece that I can give a unique color and fill up the sides with edges and corners. Luckily, the digital one is way easier to put back together than the real one. Then I just need to add some physics to it and press play. Ta -da! Oh yes, of course. I need to add a rotating mechanism. All right, so I made a rotation plane that when you start rotating it, it detects which cubelets are inside the plane. Then, when all the cubelets are detected, I stick them to the plane and rotate them with them. Once I let go of the plane, all the cubelets are released, ready to be rotated by the next one. And then, I made each turn controllable by a single button. Perfect for when I want to scramble really quick. Oh wow, that's a problem. Maybe I should add a little waiting period before I start the next turn. Ah, that's much better. And of course, no program is finished without an automatic scrambler. All right, let's try to solve it. Wait, well, no, wait, first this, then, then it was that, then... Ah, what was the algorithm? Oh my, my muscle memory doesn't really translate to mouse dragging. I need my cube if I want to have any chance at solving it. All right, back to figuring out the cube to PC connection. Like I said when I was blue, all the code to interpret the bytes is somewhere on this repository. I just need to figure out where. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Between all the boilerplate and irrelevant code, I mean, it has to be somewhere. And apart from that, it's all still in JavaScript. Time to use my magical code converter again. My personal magic trick from three years ago. Hey, psst, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Back then, there was no magical code converter. It was all me, I just typed it all by hand. But nowadays, large language models like ChatGPT have made this completely trivial. I mean, it's basically Google Translate for code. So I guess I'll just let it do its job and then uh, I'm done. One eternity later. All right, now that the code is fully converted, let me tell you how everything works with my PowerPoint presentation. This is the structure of the whole program. Over here, we see we first have the BLE device, which has the device After mode, the then uh, the characteristics, the then we have the BLE device, then the which sends the, the, the data all the way to the BLE controller, the BLE controller, and the BLE device, which the BLE device. Okay, I thought this would be more interesting, but even I'm bored. So instead, let me tell you the story of the most frustrating part of this whole thing. Ah, I'm finally done with the implementation. I'm sure everything will work just fine from the first time. 
Yes. Oh, look. It works. It works. The moves work perfectly. I'm sure the rotation will work just as fine. 12 seconds later. Huh? What, what, what's this? This is the most jittery mesh I've ever seen. And I don't even know what's wrong. I didn't know what was wrong. The decryption seemed to work perfectly based on the fact that the moves perform just as I expected. And the whole rotation code is the exact same as the JavaScript source code. So the problem had to be somewhere in between the encryption and the quaternion conversion. But then, after banging my head against the wall for many hours, I finally found the culprit. Apparently, the byte conversion has an extra parameter called little endian. Little endian, what a stupid word. How am I supposed to know what this is? And why is the default set to false? Who wrote this crappy code in here? What, what is this? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I guess when ChatGPT writes all your code, it's kind of difficult to debug everything. I don't think I can trust it fully until it knows how many R's there are in strawberry. Anyway, I'm just glad I found a solution. Because now, instead of a jittery mesh, the rotation is now as smooth as butter. Look how smooth it is. The cube is now the perfect representation of the physical one. I might have a fully controllable digital cube right now, but that's not what I wanted. I want to make a, um, a game. I really want to lean in the uniqueness of the cube as a controller. And the most unique thing about it is that each time you rotate it, a new combination of colored cubelets meet in the same plane. This got me thinking. And after a while, I decided on making a resource game where each color is its own resource. Hold on, let me show you. I haven't figured out the specifics yet, but what I do know is that since the centers don't move, they can be a special kind of tile that can serve as a source for the aura blocks. This is done by recharging them after they've been used by a different color. That way, you would have to move all the cubelets back and forth to different places all the time. Perfect for a cube game. Now, let's think of some cool environments for each color. We have orange, the brick center of the world, with a giant central oven to keep the endless demand satiated. Yellow. The vast wheat plains cover the entire surface and the central mill is working overtime. Blue, the sea calls your name, where every tile is a pond of unknown debt, where the fish are the boss, all fueled by an endless fountain of salty water. Green, a lush, beautiful forest that is ever growing under the great mother tree. White, a clean and sterile city made of giant skyscrapers built from modular blocks. And finally, Red, a harsh volcanic environment. Flames everywhere and lava pools that can only be replenished by the giant volcano. Now that all the tiles have a cool team, it's time to design the gameplay. Oh, all right, I had this game in mind where you have to collect different types of resources to build a big white city. The eight white edge tiles can be some sort of satellite city that can collect different types of resources and bring it back to the center. The big catch is that each city requires a very specific collection of colors that all need to be on the same plane at once. Only then will the white city take them and convert the resources to white resources. These white resources need to be brought back to the main tower to build it up. And it's your task to make the tower as big as possible. I want to start really easy where each city only needs one type of color. And since each plane can only contain seven different colors, ignoring the center and the white city itself, each time you bring your white resource back to the main tower, the next time you have to do one more color. So that goes from one to two, all the way up to seven. Each white resource you bring to the tower adds one point. So the total amount of points you can get is uh, eight times one, plus uh, the next level, eight times two, and then eight times three, and, and so on. So uh, that is um, 224 points. Wow, that's quite a lot. So to add something to work towards, I added some intermediate checkpoints each time you complete a whole level. And then finally, I added a timer so you can try to solve the game as quickly as possible. Just like the real cubes, the timer starts right when you make the first move. Everything is finally done. I've got all the colors and all the gameplay. 
And now, after some finishing touches, my game is ready to go. So, without any further ado, let's see how my game turned out. Right, so the timer starts when I make the first move. So I'm gonna do some inspection first. And you never know, 80 points. That should be doable. <sighs> All right, let's go. Okay, we got two points already. Okay, some green, we need some green. Let's bring it back, like this, okay. The blue, okay. We've got all the single colors. All right, now we need this, and then we need some yellow. Perfect, up, let's go. And then a combination of orange and red. Red is over here on the other side. Look at this. All right, six, 19 points already. Next checkpoint, 48 points, should be doable. All right, we got 49 points. The next checkpoint is the final one. Let's go. Red, blue, and green. Perfect. Uh -huh. Here we go. All right, 76 points. It's getting close now. And the towers are getting bigger by the minute. Four more points. One green, one blue. And then go to orange. There you are. All right, and bring it back. Yes, I did it. Oh, that was fun. You can play the game right now on itch.io. So try your best. If you enjoyed this video, press the little like button. And if you want to see more videos in the future, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!